In this video, I would like to help you play the piano piece Sweden from the game Minecraft. And one of the things that I would like to do is to give you multiple pointers because it's not a particularly easy piano piece, but let's go to a close-up of the piano so I can show you what I mean. So in order to help you play Sweden, I have a couple of suggestions. The first one is that you really need a sustain pedal. So the sustain pedal is gonna allow you to play a chord and to move and to make the notes a little bit more connected. So I think without a sustain pedal, this song is not gonna sound the way that it's supposed to. And the other thing that I definitely recommend, in this case, I have my notes transposed. So that means that the note that I'm playing here is actually the one on the other side of the piano and the reason that I'm doing that mostly is because of the camera because I cannot really move my setup but it's probably not a bad idea for you to do that as well so uh, we're gonna start playing the beginning is gonna be pinky on D and uh, left hand plays seven times the same thing and it's gonna be like this it's gonna be E F sharp G B and then A G that D is a little bit longer because it's a half note. And there, I would say definitely finger four on E, so you can put pinky on D. And that way you should be able to like move through them and not really have an issue with them. That I think I would get it very clear because a big bulk of the song is playing that, or a big bulk of the piece is playing this on the left hand, making, making sure that you do it steady. Now with the right hand, we're gonna be playing chords, first two notes, but then three. Every time that you play three, I would recommend doing one, three, and five. So, for example, the first batch of the first time that we go around is say uh, this. So that's not particularly challenging. Then we repeat, and now we're gonna do three notes. Now, let me do one more time. The next time it goes like this. Let me mention, with uh, our tutorials, uh, one of the main things is we want people that are young to be able to play them, so we make some changes, and especially on this one, we took a couple of notes and moved them around a little bit to make sure that someone that is young can play it. I don't think there's a big change into how it sounds. You can definitely check how the whole thing sounds at the end, which I'm gonna play it, but what's important here is to, we're trying to enable people that are young to be able to play it. So those are the first three, not much to it. Now the fourth time is when it starts to like actually move a little bit more. So I'll play it and I give you a couple of suggestions. Now the first thing you're gonna do is play EGB and then immediately move to do that B and A up there. So EGB, B, A, and then that chords. One of the big things about jumping is jump with a specific finger in mind. So for example, there I'm thinking of reaching a, my finger four on that A. So, and that already puts me in a good position to play the, the rest. So I'll play it for a second. The, this is the fourth time that we play the pattern. Now 
Now, one big suggestion that I have is practice each one of those sections many times until like, you really get it. The next one changes again, and all of these are gonna change a little bit. Uh, when we go from four, fifth, six, and seven, they all have a little bit of nuances, so I'll play them individually. Probably here, because we can't really share sheet music with you, try to make sure that you write them and have an idea how are they different. So the next one is even more of a jump, because now we're gonna do EGB but jump to a D up here. So, and that D is very soon, it's very quickly right after the chord. So. so there also I will repeat that jump and then make sure that you get that D with your pinky. Part of what you want on this one is when you jump already be thinking about not only the jump but what's coming up afterwards so you want to be able to like be in a good position so let me do number six number six changes again uh... now for that one that one is one of the ones that felt a little bit uncomfortable when i was practicing so uh, g uh, egb then a probably there maybe finger two and three two three and that chord that chord is f sharp a and d immediately move the pinky up and do f sharp e and then e a c sharp you hold that chord and then we do d c sharp and there's a little bit of a gap there a little bit of a jump so again if i just do right hand So those are, I would say, that one and the next one are the most challenging ones. Then it changes a little bit, which I'll show you that as well. So this is number seven, uh, slowly. So there, part of the suggestions that I have is make sure that you're doing, because you're gonna do F sharp, F sharp, and an A quickly. So that's a big jump as well. Here you have to move quickly to do D, E, and then grab this chord, and then again move quickly the pinky up. So if I just play it again. So. And then the left hand is the same. So my biggest, biggest tip is definitely take take each one of the sections. The, the piece is beautiful, and I think it's a very cool one. Uh, and just go one at a time, and we'll label them in the video and in the in the time code at the beginning, so you can find each one if you're just having trouble, let's say, with seven. Uh, and that way we can, we can put each one of the sections. So with that said, we're going to change to the, the last part. The last part changes chords. It does that twice. So that's going to be a, a B minor. So B minor seven. Now there are two Ds, two, two Bs on the left hand. Now that's an octave. If you're younger, maybe play just the bottom note, but you're going to do this, hold it. And that's an E major. So that's a little bit of a spread position, one, three, and five, probably for both. And then you do, and here it's a little bit of an uncomfortable position because you have to do quickly D, E, and then play this chord. That chord sounds a little bit dissonant. It's a D, F sharp, G, and B with G and F sharp on the left hand. So that's a pretty quick chord. And I like, I like it. I think it's, a, it's an interesting sound to get it down there. But that's a pretty challenging little part. So that will be this, two, three. Now, after you do that, it's very similar. Uh, again, two Bs on the left hand. Then this one. And then we go to this chord. Uh, that would be the ending. So there also probably fingerings, and let me show you that I guess the last part, I will do one, two, and four. So one, three, and five probably. There, here, it's a little bit uncomfortable. So maybe one, two, B to this chord. And then you definitely wanna do four and five for this D and E. And then, now this is the same thing of doing G and F sharp. That's a little bit of an uncomfortable position, but uh, 
that one is probably important to play both keys because it's really going to give you that sound almost at the very end. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you are interested in taking lessons uh, with me or with anyone else here at the Hit Music Studio, definitely check our main website, thehitmusicstudio.com. Uh, definitely give us a like. That way uh, YouTube uh, shows this video to other people as well. And we want to thank you for watching.